All right, let's do a subdomain takeover video, hey? Why not? <laughs> okay, um, I've really struggled with this video, to be honest, and so I'm sorry it's taken a while. I, j I just didn't know who to aim it at. I feel that subdomain takeovers are just so commonly talked about in the bug bounty space, and I want to to make sure I was adding value. So up front, I have a lot of biases here and a lot of caveats here. First one, I work for Bugcrowd. So I'm not gonna be talking about any subdomain takeover types in this video that aren't in the public domain. That's research that uh, hunters have of their own. I take that very seriously. So I'm not, any anything you hear covered here, it's all public. The other thing I'm gonna talk about here, if you don't know what a subdomain takeover is or you're beginning, and you're starting out, I'm gonna to touch on it, but I'm probably not gonna do it justice at your level. And I really recommend looking into some other authors um, and having a dig around. I'll try and put some of those resources in the description. And lastly, I'm pretty passionate about this subject with two core biases. One, I contributed quite a lot to the Can I Take Over XYZ project and helped moderate it with Adobe Overflow for a time uh, pre my role at Bug Crowd because I felt at that point I had a conflict. Um, and I also, uh, along with Iceman and Emzak and some others, was a founding author of the Subfinder project. Back before a mass fast domain and everything else existed, there was really only Sublister, um, and it had long fallen out of date, and Subfinder was the first mover to change that space. And so, having been so active in that project at that time, it, subdomain takeovers were a natural consequence of getting better at subdomain discovery through passive sources so those biases aside i'm going to cover this in a more unique fashion to the basic content and i hope in a way that adds you some value to your hunting <laughs> let's cover the hard bit first then what are people doing wrong and the easy answer to that and this this doesn't apply to everyone it's just that i believe applies to the majority the principal thing they're doing wrong is they're trusting the can i take over list either directly or indirectly so directly what I mean by that is that you've gone to that list, you've taken it at face value. The most misunderstood thing about that list is that the value in it isn't in readme.md. That core table that you see, it's not where the value is. It's actually structured more like a discussion board. The issues on that repository are where the value is and a lot of the front readme is actually not correct. There's a lot of out of date structure and content there. So if we know readme.md isn't correct and we know it's structured like a bulletin board, surely that means the issues are good and correct too, right? Well, unfortunately not. The issues themselves aren't really used actively by the people in community that can contribute the most value. And that's not to say there aren't valuable contributors there, there absolutely is, and there's some really good, amazing people in there. The challenge is that a lot of subdomain takeover types that provide the most value don't tend to get surfaced in discussion in a public forum like that. They tend to go private. And so what this has led to is a quiet release of some tools that would release, um, would I guess exploit other areas of subdomain takeovers. So an example of this is Brute53, which is a tool that's receive very little attention but can be used to uh, brute force route 53 endpoints when there's a gap in a route 53 takeover now that takeover type has never made it to the kind of takeover repo and interestingly there's blog entries out there saying it's not possible to do that despite a tool being there and a pretty easy path to testing it yourself and now I'm not gonna say whether that tool works or not. And even if I said it did, that could be incorrect later. And if I said it didn't, that could be incorrect later because these services are a changing point in time and this video is fixed. But what you should be doing is looking for those kinds of tools, setting up your own instance of Route 53 or Azure endpoints, and then seeing the outcome yourself because the prevalence of blog entries and content surrounding this that's both out of date and inaccurate is much higher than you'll see in other vulnerability types. So what does that mean for the indirect usage? And indirect usage, I mean, you're using tools at face value. Subject is quite a great tool. However, the author is also just built it around public su subdomain takeover types, which is completely fair and completely within reason. But what it means is you're missing out on all of those other subdomain takeover types that aren't in the general data source. You need to add them yourself. And how do you do that? 
So essentially you can do this one of two ways or potentially both. The first way I recommend, just start building services out. Get a domain, start adding DNS, adding services and testing for subdomain takeovers yourself. It's very easy. The same way a subdomain takeover works. Create a DNS record, point it to a service, remove the service and try to recreate it. Some of those are going to be premium services and you might need to spend some money on that research. That's where the true gravy in these lie if you're willing to do that and others aren't. Secondarily, another way to detect it and one that I strongly recommend doing is searching for unique strings that could match a subdomain takeover type. You'll see if you look at the can I take over list a lot of commonality in the error responses that a service will give when it's been removed which can indicate a subdomain takeover is possible. You can also look over NX domain responses. So Microsoft Azure, for example, isn't very well documented on the Canada Takeover repo, but is very well documented by OX Patrick, relies and requires an NX domain response for a takeover to be possible. So that suggests that that could indicate over other types of services as well. You also should look into more unique cases. It may not be as simple as adding a record and removing it. There might be something else at play. So I've got it documented out there publicly. For a while, you could brute force the nonces on Amazon ELBs, for example. There was a random nonce given in a CNAME record. However, you could achieve that through brute force. Likewise, if you look at the source code of how uh, Brute53 works, you'll see it's not as simple as rebuilding a service. It's brute forcing until it hits a result. You can also see in other content, such as Shub's recent article where he wrote about different subdomain takeover types that he had an EC2 one in there. And given the way EC2 works, it's the same outcome. It's not as simple as brute forcing your way through these takeover types. So you need to think in a few ways. Firstly, using the public tooling is good as a start. It's going to give you a foundational list of services to take over, but you need to expand it. So you need to do your own research, work out what's vulnerable to expand it, but you can also find additional tools, additional resources in the issues of the Can I Take Over list, looking closely at blog entries and what people are doing to help you discover that next step. Further to that, you should then also consider adding your own tooling to look, or you're even as simple as a Python script or a bash script, looking for unique strings in subdomain responses, looking at certain response types, and looking for short responses. If something's less than 500 characters, good indication it's an error message, it might indicate something like this. Using all of that together, instead of just going with a standard subdomain list and then a standard tooling set is going to allow you to find more unique subdomain takeover types. And each time you find one, you can add it to those tools yourself for future use case. The more times you do this and the more you expand that list, the more value you're adding to your hunting forever. Essentially, you're going to discover new types that you might find one today and one in a year. It's extremely valuable. So I guess that's a ton of information and a ton of you should be doing, and that's not as valuable as how do I start doing this today. So take on board the advice and the approaches I've given you, but the people I would dig into and, and read their work starting from here to make that next step and how I've started making those next steps. First and foremost, uh, Franz Rosen. He, in large part, is the founding father of this bug class. He was talking about it years before anyone else was. Go onto YouTube, look for old Franz Rosen talks. I'll put some in the bio. Uh, secondarily, Shubs. Shubs is one of the key innovators in this space of modern age and has put out a lot of recent work discussing his hunting. He did a 120 days blog article and you can look over that and go, okay, well, what is he doing here that no one else is doing? And what is he doing here that isn't in the tooling? And just keeping up to date with his work because he does push the bar and is one of the great innovators of today. Not saying Franz isn't, he definitely is. Um, both are very worth watching. And another person is OX Patrick. OX Patrick documents these in from a subdomain enumeration standpoint and a takeover standpoint to a really broad depth of detail and essentially his work was the reason I didn't feel I could add as much value doing a video on this is how you do this and instead give general advice of how I move to the next step because he's done such a fantastic job of it. So I'll link that as well and 
between Franz Rosen, Shubs, and Alex Patrick, you're really set up to understand the progression of this space outside of that first beginner surface layer of the can I take over list and the public tooling. And if you dig into that and you're willing to put the work in that others aren't doing, you're going to discover those more unique cases that potentially no one else is looking for, or potentially some people are looking for, and you're stepping up into that as well. So, I mean, that's it. That's essentially this video is, you know, dig into Shubs, OX Patrick, and also Franz Rosen, go over their stuff, get in detail with it, and also spend time on expanding the tooling yourself and looking at responses on subdomains more than just enumerating subdomains and then running subdomain takeover tools. That is giving you just what everyone else is doing. You want to push it to that next step so you can achieve better bug bounties and better subdomain takeovers.